As always, when you want to make some major changes to your PDF files, you're going to need to go back to the source document to make the changes there and regenerate to PDF. However, if you want to make some minor touch-ups to both text or objects, you can do that with Acrobat. You can also extend some features so that your users using the free version of Adobe Reader can also add text. So we'll explore what we can do here in Acrobat. Well, I've got this file and it has some interesting text in there. I want to make a few changes. And I'm opening up my tools pane and I have my content section open here and I can look at the edit text and objects. These used to be called the touch-up tools, touch-up text and touch-up object in the legacy versions and now in Acrobat X you can see it's the edit document text edit object. I'm going to go ahead and click on edit document text and some fonts are loading and now I can actually click and insert text. I'm going to go ahead and simply type in his initial, his middle initial, and I'll just change his title as well. And you can see how I just easily made that, that change. I'm going to go here to Edit Object, and I can click on the object. I'm using my arrow keys to simply nudge over. And as I click on the different objects, I can find different elements that can be customized. I'll go back to Edit to Document Text, and I get that cursor. Now, this is going to be great for some minor changes, but be aware that the, the more changes you're making, the more, um, the more tricky it's going to get. So if I'm going to go ahead and add in, after our company, the initials, and you can see as I added that in how the text is getting pushed out. And if I were to even put in a little bit more information, You can see as I'm typing this information in, the text is not wrapping by default. I'll need to use my own wrap, and it gets, it gets tricky here. So we have to be careful about what kind of information we're going to update. And if I had to do a lot of revisions, it might be simpler to, to just replace this whole page, make the changes in a program like Word and replace it. I'll go ahead and revert, and I've lost all my changes, but at least it's nice and clean. Now one feature I can take advantage of, and I use my edit preferences, I'm going to move down to touch up. Remember these used to be called touch up tools, so it makes sense that we've got a preference called touch up. And there is a feature here to enable text word wrapping. And it's not going to be foolproof, but it does have some options. I got a few other options in here, but I'm going to go ahead and click on that and let's see what happens when I go ahead and make a couple changes in here. And you can see how the text is automatically starting to wrap. However, like I said, it's not completely foolproof and I still have to go in and make some revisions. I'll go ahead and revert. And let's just double check that preference. I think that I actually prefer having it l turned off because it gives me a little bit more control over the editing process for these minor revisions. Now another trick that I like to do when I'm working with the touch up or the edit document, uh, edit document tool is that I can also use it to delete content. So if I wanted just to remove the title and leave it as so. And if I go ahead and right click all that information, I can access the properties. Now properties is a kind of a magic word, if you will, in Acrobat. And it allows you to make changes to the appearance of different objects. Well here, I can actually make changes to the appearance of the text. And I could change the color. Fill is the Adobe word for foreground color. And incidentally, stroke is the Adobe word for the border. And I could go ahead and pick a color that I want to use. If I click somewhere else, you can see how that change is automatically reflected. I'll go ahead and change the motto here. It's telling me a quick note that the, the font that was used for this may not be completely in place, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and choose properties. And I'll pick that same color. 
looks actually pretty good. Another trick that's helpful is that when you are removing content, you're going to notice how there's a shift in here. So for example, if I were to delete this content, it can shift in a strange way. And so often when I want to keep the spacing of the content, but uh, make it look like it's not there, I will simply change the fill to no color. And yeah, it's still part of the document. Technically, it's still there, but it will print as if there is no content there. So it's a nice little cheat that I can use when I'm updating forms, for example. And I can go ahead and undo or control Z and get my content back. Now, I can also add text boxes. So if I wanted to add a text box, I could create one using the edit document tool and I'm going to hold down my control key while I click. Now there are some default tools or some default settings in here, what font I want to use and how the text is aligned. And I'll go ahead and keep the defaults in here. But there is my new text box and I'm going to go ahead and put in a phone number. And so I've got that content and again I can use my edit object tool to place the content relative to what I want. And it's actually, believe it or not, it's actually easier to create this number as a separate box for aligning purposes because they're right aligned and, and then simply use the edit object to position it where I want. And then if I want to change the color again I would go back to my edit document text and make the change there. Now this edit object tool has some great options working with other ob objects, for example, this graphic. And when I right click on the graphic with my edit object tool, I can do some things to the graphic. For example, I could flip or rotate the graphic. I can make it an artifact. An artifact means that if I were to set up this document for accessibility, the graphic would be ignored so that it wouldn't be, the, so screen readers would not try to pick it up. Now this particular graphic, I probably would want it to be um, picked up by a screen reader, but if I had some other elements like a background image, that's where I would use the artifact feature. The edit image is helpful if you have editing software on your system then that is what's going to open up. So it could be Photoshop or perhaps it could be um, a tool like Paint. <laughs> and then you have some more options for working with the properties as well. Now, the other feature you can do when it's selected is you can simply delete that image. I can move an image around, position it. I can also resize it if I want to. And with the edit object, I can place an image. Now, right now, it's, um, Acrobat is looking for JPEGs. I'm going to change that. I have a TIFF file. You can notice the different types of file formats that are supported. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the TIFF. I'm going to bring in an image that is a more simplified version of that tool. And I'll go ahead and save this file as, and we'll call that version 3. Now, there is another tool here called Add or Edit Text Box. This tool used to be the typewriter tool in the legacy version. And this allows me to put content. It's not as flexible as the Edit Document and Edit Object tools combined but it does allow me to add text without having to create form fields. And, and it's handy if I have scanned in a file and I want to quickly type in content. And once I click somewhere on the page, then I can make some changes for, to the properties. So for example, what font do I want to use? What fill color do I want to use? I have a few other options with the text, etc. And then I could type 
Let me make sure I'm in there. Let's try that. Test. Now, one nice advantage of this typewriter tool is that you can extend files so that people who are using Adobe Reader, the free version, and not Acrobat Pro or Acrobat Standard, can still start typing in text. I'm going to go ahead and revert this file. And when I revert it, it's reverting to the last time I saved. And since I had saved recently, I'm only losing a few elements. And I'm going to close this file, go to Reader. And in Reader, let's see what happens when I open up this file. Now again, this is the free version. We'll just give it a moment to load. This is the free version that anyone could download. And I'm going to open up, actually, let's, let's work with this Excel file. Go ahead and open up this Excel file. And I am able to read it and view it, but I actually don't have any options for editing. I don't have an option here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this file come back to Acrobat, and let me open up this file inside of Acrobat. And we'll just make our way to the file here. And when I save the file, I had the option to use Reader Extended PDF. There's actually quite a few options that we can use. And this, is, this, this concept has been around for several versions of Acrobat. I'm going to go here and enable adding text and documents that are not part of a fillable form. And it reminds me that this used to be the typewriter tool. It's going to be enabled in Adobe Reader. I'll go ahead and choose OK. And I'm going to put an E at the end of it to remind me this has been enabled. Or sometimes you'll hear the terminology of extended. And I'll close that file. You can even see some information there. Go ahead and close that file. And we'll go back to Reader. And with Reader, let's go ahead and open this file with the E, the one that's been extended. And you'll notice here it has an extra, an extra panel, extended panel, with options for adding or editing text. And I can click on that tool. And I do have options for working with the properties as well, for changing the font, et cetera. So when you want to make some, some touch-ups to your text, you can definitely, in Acrobat, use the Edit Text command and the Edit Object command. And then you can also take advantage of the tool that was formerly the typewriter to quickly add text or to enable users with Adobe Reader.